Hello everybody, bonjour tout le monde. Je me présente. Let me introduce myself. My name is Charles Gauthier. And today, I should say lately, I've been thinking of doing videos about French, learning French. Uh, yeah, I should introduce myself more fully. Uh, yeah, so I'm French and I've been living in the States for quite some time now. Uh, my English is okay. I still have a quite an accent, I, I think, and uh, some uh, some words I don't pronounce right. But I think I can. Uh, explain a few things about French the best that I can okay so today I'm gonna do I'm gonna make a video about uh, mostly le passé composé in English the uh, present present perfect but I will also talk about the imperfect Imparfait, the simple past, passé simple, and I will also talk about, of all things, the passive voice, la voix passive, because sometimes it causes confusion. Uh, why, you may ask? Because la voix passive et and the passé composé sometimes they look the same so there's confusion sometimes about what what is what so I'll talk about that also okay so I think I'm gonna get started okay first thing first let's do let's uh, talk about uh, imparfait That's uh, that's a tense of the indi indicative mode or mood. Uh, you probably know about all this, but I think it doesn't hurt to to uh, talk about it. And uh, imparfait is uh, very often used in opposition with the passé simple, simple past. When you when you read a book, you're gonna see that all the time, so it's important. So let's look at imparfait. So if I draw like a timeline, and this is the present, present. So here that would be the past. So, uh, so you use the in the imperfect, the l'imparfait when the, act the action is in the past and there's no it's like ongoing there's no mention of beginning or end so I'm gonna do dots to, to show that, that there's no beginning there's no real end so this is uh, this is imperfect, l'imparfait and it's called imperfect because there's no it's ongoing, there's no beginning and end. Okay, also you can use you, you use the imperfect l'imparfait quand l'action it's a repeated action. So let's say it happens here, it happens here, again here, again here, like regularly, something like that. And again, there's no beginning, no end, it's kind of blurry. So I, let's do an example of that first. Okay, so this is one. So I call it uh, ongoing. And two is repeated action. So for that first one, uh, 
I mean, a typical uh, thing would be like con j'étais jeune. Je m'en j'ai beaucoup de soupe. So when I was young, so that's imparfait here, uh, être, to be, when I was young, Je mangeais beaucoup de soupe. Uh, when I was young, uh, I was eating. So you, when you translate in English, you either use uh, like the was ing, which is called the past progressive wasing, or you can also use like a construct like used used to. Okay. So again, this is also à l'imparfait. So, quand j'étais jeune, je mangeais beaucoup de soupe. Uh, when I was young, I used to eat or I was eating a lot of uh, soup. So as you can see, there's no notion of beginning or, or end. It's just something on that was ongoing in the past. Uh, the repeated case. So you can have the same uh, quand j'étais jeune. Je mangeais. Je mangeais de la soupe. tous les jours So when I was young I used to uh, or I was eating I used to eat or I was eating soup every day so the every day tous les jours shows that it's a repeated action in the past it was happening every day Ok, so this is imparfait, this is imparfait. Ok, so I think I'm gonna stop with imparfait and now go to simple past, passé simple. And uh, the simple past is used mostly in books. In uh, spoken French, you never use it. You just never use it but as soon as you read a book you're gonna see it all the time and often in opposition with the uh, imperfect l'imparfait so let's talk about le passé simple okay so now let's talk about le passé simple the simple past okay so le passé simple Let's look at the, the timeline again. That's the present. And so that's the past. And le passé simple is an action that's either like punctual, very short, or it can be uh, it can be uh, something that has been going on for a while. But you know when it began and when it ended okay so it's very it's very definite so that's the opposition with the imperfect the imperfect so let's look at uh, at an example so let's look at for instance this case which is just something very punctual okay so let me find uh, okay so for instance il faisait nuit il faisait nuit 
Uh, I would add something else, but I'm too lazy to write it. Il faisait nuit quand le téléphone sonna. So, il faisait nuit. So, so that's, that's uh, imperfect, not parfait. Of verb uh, faire. Il faisait nuit, so it was it was dark when the phone rang. To sonner his ring, sonner his ring. So that's in that's passé simple. Yeah. Passé simple. Yeah. Okay. So il faisait nuit, so il faisait nuit means that it's some kind of uh, like this. So this is il faisait nuit in the, on the timeline, and this is. Le téléphone sonna, so it's like something punctual. Okay, so the but it doesn't have to be something very short in duration. It can it can it can be several hours, several days, several years. For instance, uh, uh, il tra va Ya a la SNCF de 1997 à 1999. So, il travailla. So, this is again passé simple. So, this is PS passé simple. Il travailla. So, he worked. At the SNCF. SNCF is the French Amtrak, so that's the railroad uh, company, from uh, 1997 to 1999. Okay, so on the timeline, this corresponds to this action. Okay, and here you cannot say il travaillait à la SNCF de 97 à 99 because of this part. So you cannot use the imperfect here, l'imparfait. You can say, il travaillait à la SNCF. Which you would translate by, he was working at the SNCF, or he used to work at the SNCF. And that corresponds to this. Something that was ongoing in the past. But as soon as you put your beginning and an end, you have to use the passé simple, a simple past. Okay? Uh, so this thing here, if you read a book, you're gonna see that construct very, very often. Uh, imperfect, imparfait, then you have quand, when, and then you have something passé simple, simple past. So that's it for the imperfect and the simple past. Now I'm going to switch to the my main subject, I guess, which is the passé composé, the present perfect. You know, let's go back a little bit to that uh, imperfect versus passé simple business. So, uh, like, um, like if you if you were to read a book, you could find something like "il était grand, il était beau et." Il travaillait chez Renault. So Renault is a French car maker, and it rhymes. You see, beau Renault. So il était grand, il était beau, il travaillait chez Renault. Bla bla bla. So this is all. 
verbs at the imperfect, the imperfect tense. Était, était, travailler. So, était is from être, être, travailler. So, you would find that, for instance, in a, like a nar narration in a book. So, it means timeline, present. So, it's basically a period, on ongoing period. You don't really know where it started and where it ended. So that's fine. But you could also say, and before I was saying that, okay, like il tra va ya blah 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 uh, de uh, this date to that date. Okay, il travailla, he, uh, he worked blah 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 from this date to that date, so that's passé simple. And we establish that th we establish that we have to use the passé simple because there is a beginning and an end. So if you look at the timeline, instead of being fuzzy, it's very clear. Okay, so that's 1997 and that's 1999. But, and I'm going to change. But, you can also say just il travailla chez Renault. Just like that. You can say that, but it implies on the timeline that that was not an ongoing period. There was a beginning and an, and an end, even though it's not mentioned, it's implied. Okay, il travailla chez Renault, and now uh, basically it doesn't work there. But il travailla chez Renault from at some point. That's what it means. So. If you say il travaille chez Renault, it means there was a beginning and an end. And if you just say il travaille chez Renault, and I want to, I'm repeating myself, but it's kind of important on the timeline. It looks like this, okay? So it's kind of blurry. It's an ongoing period, but you don't know when, when, when it started and when it, when it ended. Okay, so I think I'm going to stop here about this business. Imperfect versus passé simple. And as I said before, you see that opposition a lot when you read books. Okay, so I'm going to stop here about this. All right, so now let's talk about Passé composé in English present perfect. First, let's see how you uh, build it. So the passé composé uses an aux auxiliary, auxiliary verb, and a past participle, participe passé. So let's take the verb uh, aimer, to like, to love. Okay. So the auxiliary. So this is what um, there are two auxiliaries avoir ou être. In this case, you would use avoir and I'm going to explain when to use avoir or when and when to use être. But here you use avoir. So, uh, aimer au passé, au passé composé, it's if I give you the old conjugation, the old conjugation table, la conjugaison is G et mais 
tu a et mais yeah the reason why you use avoir to have as an auxiliary, aux, auxiliary verb is because aimer is a uh, is a transitive verb and I'll explain that a little bit later but okay j'ai aimé, tu as aimé tu as aimé, il a aimé nous avons aimé vous avez aimé et ils ont été mais ok so that's one let's look at another one that's gonna use être as the auxiliary for instance allez to go uh, and why because it's an intransitive verb intransitive verb if you already know what's a transitive and an intransitive verb, bravo. But I will explain that next, very soon. So it's an intransitive verb that uh, that shows movement, that expresses movement. So it's intransitive plus expresses uh, expresses movement. change of location so okay so allez allez c'est je suis allez so suis is a uh, present of être allez is the past participle of allez to go so je suis allé tu es allé il elle est allé Nous sommes Vous allez vous êtes Vous allez et ils sont allés. Okay, so that's how you form it. And I have to explain when you use avoir as the auxiliary verb and when do you when do you use être as the auxiliary verb? And it has to do with this thing. Is it a transitive or is it an intransitive verb? And there's also is the form pronominal so that's another thing to consider it's reflexive reflexive form that's another thing to worry about okay so let's talk about that in the next slide now let's talk about uh, intransitive verbs and transitive verbs so let's talk about first ver verb intransitif mm, after reflection I'm going to talk about verb transitive transitive verbs so those are action verbs and the action is uh, on the complement okay so let's look at the example uh, il construit construit une 
base. Uh, he builds or is building a house. A house. So that's uh, that's present. And the verb is present tense, and the verb is construire. So what is this? This is called a complement. So this guy, the subject of the verb, verb is uh, is performing an action on the complement. Okay. So construire construire is the action verb, and uh, the action is on this guy, une maison, the complement. So you have two types of verb transitif. This is a verb transitif, transitif direct. Verb transitif, transitif direct. Why, you may ask? Because this complement is, which is called a complement, complement d'objet, direct. And why is it called direct? Because here there is no preposition. There's nothing here. It's just space. There's no preposition. So you may ask, give me an example of a verb that's transitive and indirect. Very easy. Uh, let me think. For instance, je parle à mon voisin. I speak to my neighbor. So this is here, mon voisin. This is CO complément d'objet. But because here you have a preposition, preposition. Let me spell that for you. Preposition. This means this is a COI, complément d'objet indirect. Okay? Which means that this guy is a verb transitif indirect. Okay? So there are two types of verb transitif, transitive verbs, direct or indirect. Okay, so next, verb intransitif. Which means that the verb is an action verb, but there's no object upon which the action is. Okay. For instance, verb uh, intransitif. Uh, so there it's an action verb, but there's there's no complement. There's no object upon which the action is done. Okay, does that make sense? Probably not. But let's look at an example. Like something like this, very simple. Je marche. Je marche. I walk. It's an action verb, but there's no there's no complement here. The action is not upon something. Okay, so there's nothing here. So that's why it's called intransitif. Okay, so there are 
tons of like that, tons of verbs like that. Uh, another one, je, dors, dors, comes from dormir, to sleep, je dors. Again, it's an action verb, but there's no complement. It's not an action on anything. There's no action on something. Okay. So that's a uh, intransitive verb. Okay, so now when do you use être être as an auxiliary? Okay. You only use être when verb. So a verb intransitif, intransit, intransitif. Verb intransitif, intransitive verb. Plus that verb which is intransitif, intransitive must also uh, express. Uh, a displacement, movement, displacement. Or uh, express a change or express a, a change um, a change of state. So this, for example, an easy one, aller, to go. Okay, so you would say je suis allé, et non pas j'ai allé, so, surtout pas j'ai allé. Uh, arriver, to arrive. Um, entrer, to enter, and there are quite a few like that. Express a change of state. Uh, an easy one is devenir, to become. Uh, another one is unfortunately mourir. to die and there are a few other like that change of state okay so that's but that's not all there's another it can also be used it's a, it is also used hold on let me erase this so still I'm still with être as auxiliary So that another possibility is when uh, the verb the verb is used in the uh, pro pro no in the pronominal pronominal form or reflexive form in English uh, form pronominal pronominal reflexive form I think it's called and that's very easy it's when you have so for instance, so when the action is on yourself, so so. So, for instance, je me suis uh, se laver to wash to 
to wash oneself, to wash yourself. Okay. Je me suis lavé. Okay. So le me, it's called the pronoun personnel. Pronom personnel. Uh, Réfléchi. Because the action is on yourself. So this is the, the subject of the verb and this is the complement basically and the complement and the subject are the same person. So it's uh, the action is on the subject basically. So that's the pronominal pronominal form and in that case you have to use être as the auxiliary. Okay. Now when do you use avoir? So uh, when do you use avoir? as auxiliary well it's easy it's whenever you don't use uh, être okay so uh, so you 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 use avoir for sure if the verb is quand le verbe est transitif ok quand le verbe est transitif no question about it. you always use avoir in that case and uh, in real life uh, most of the case most of the time you're going to use avoir you're going to use you're going to use avoir as the auxiliary être is used but not as much as avoir because most of the time the verb you're going to use is transitive transitive now there are some things that are a little bit uh, you have to be careful in French because of course there are some uh, subtleties so let's look at an example let's take le verb laver to wash so I'm gonna do. Uh, I'm gonna use it in the, in the passé composé. Uh, okay, for instance, j'ai. Oops, j'ai. J'ai lavé ma voiture. So here you use avoir as the auxiliary because laver is of course. So this is the CO complement d'objet and in this case it's direct because there's no preposition here. So this is a uh, laver here is transitive. Okay? But se laver so you, you use laver but this time in the pronominal form so this is to wash and this is to wash oneself to wash oneself and here you say je me suis être Je me suis lavé. Okay. Okay. So this is the form pronominal. So because uh, here you are using lavé in the form in the form pronominal, you have to switch to être. Okay. Another tricky example. Another tricky example. Uh, sortir. To sort. 
to leave. Ok, so first example, j'ai sorti, j'ai sorti mon porte portefeuille sortir so yeah to leave or to take out so I took out so this is avoir of course I took out my uh, wallet so here what this by now you should know that this is the C COD complement d'objet in this case direct because there's no preposition here so here this guy that's the past participle participe passé uh, sorti which is the in this case used as a transitif verb transitif okay but so here sortir is used as a transitive verb but it can also be used as intransitive verb you see the complexity of the language so like uh, il or yeah, il est sorti so here uh, it means uh, to take out And here it means to leave. Okay, so that should clue you in the, the change of meaning. So il est sorti, uh, he left, or he went out, he went out to go out, shit, to go out. Il est sorti, so here it's être as the auxiliary it is sorti and here sorti uh, the verb is used uh, as an intransitive verb un transitif there is no complement d'objet here there is nothing there is no complement Object, whether it's direct or indirect, there is no complement d'objet. I mean, you could have different, another type of complement, complement. Like, il est sorti, il est sorti, uh, il est sorti dans la rue. He went out in the street. But this is not a CO. This is not a CO. This is something else. Okay. So that's another tricky, tricky situation to to be aware of, I guess. Okay. So it's now now time to talk about the usage. When do you use le passé composé? Uh, in a nutshell, in a nutshell. But I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's going to help you. Though. Uh, whenever you sh you, whenever you would use the the passé simple, you actually use the passé composé. I'm not sure that's going to help you though, if you are trying to learn. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to go into the the Becherel, the grammar, the official grammar, official French grammar. It's very uh, good. It's called Becherel. Okay, and see what they say about the usage. Okay, so there's a the first there's a two usages apparently. First one uh, to express to express an action. Oops to express an action that's uh, accomplished 
Oops, accomplished. Oh no, accomplished. To express an action that's accomplished, completed, we could, we could say. Accomplished, completed. And that's the tricky part in the present. In the present. So it's an action that's accomplished in the present. So on the timeline, I'm not completely sure what it would show. So this is present, so you're here. So it's an action that's kind of a here. Okay, so it's accomplished in the present. Okay, it's not super clear to be honest. But let's look at an example. Canton ne seul on a vite des jeux. Ne. So this is the present, of course, of être, and this is à déjeuner is passé composé. Let me try to translate that first. So when you're alone or by yourself, uh, basically you uh, you have you have lunch quickly. I think that would be the translation in English. But what Becherel is saying here is that this is the present and this action is accomplished in the present. This action is accomplished in the present. Okay, fine. But to be honest, you could also say this quand on est seul, like we do in English, quand on est seul, on déjeune vite. Okay, so that's present, and that's also present. So P and P, both are present. So, uh, when you are by yourself, when you are alone, you have lunch quickly. Means the same thing. So, uh, to be honest, to be perfectly honest, I would not worry about this uh, usage if you're learning French. This is such a technicality, I would not worry about it. So now let's look at the second, uh, the second usage according to Becherel. Okay, so we are still looking at Becherel. Okay, so second usage, second usage, which is the one that you really want, the one that you really should uh, consider because I, I don't see the point of that first one. So you express the past. You express the, the past just like le passé simple, the simple past. Okay. So, for example, la marquise est sortie à 5 heures. So this is passé composé here. Uh, here you use a, so auxiliary is uh, être, because sortir, sortir is uh, intransitive, 
and uh, expresses uh, movement, displacement. So you have to use être as the auxiliary, as explained before, by the way. So this is uh, passé composé, but you could say the exact same thing using the passé simple. Exactly the same thing. So this is passé simple of so here. Okay? This is passé simple, it's not uh, it's not uh, present. Present is so. So uh, this would uh, be used when you talk, regular talking, everyday talking. This would only be used in writing. You would never say that say this when you talk, never. So, okay. So, so, so that's the main usage of the passé composé. It expresses the past just like the passé simple. Very simple. Okay. So let's move on. So the next topic is gonna be the passive voice, and you're gonna understand why I bring this up. Oh I, yeah, I forgot to translate that, 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 those two s that sentence. Okay, so la marquise is the. Uh, no, he said the marquise, the wife of the marquise, the marquise. Is sorties uh, went out at five five o'clock and the other one is the exact same thing and they are both I use the pr basically the preterite for both okay so let's move on so let's talk about uh, la voix passive passive voice so the passive voice uh, let's look at an example I took that from Becherel les petites les petites souris sont Dévoré par le gros chat. So the little mice are eaten by the big cat. So uh, the word passive, it means that uh, the subject like here, les petites souris, that's the subject, subject, sujet in French, is the one that, uh, uh, is the one on which, on which the action happen. Okay. So that's the passive voice. Uh, it is the subject that... Uh, uh, let me find a better word. Give me two seconds. Yeah, so it's the subject that, I don't know, undergoes the action, that is subjected to the action. Does that make more sense? So this is the passive voice. If you, you contrast that with the la voix active, which is the active voice. So let's look at la voix active for that same example. So le gros 
chat dévore euh, dévore that's a r dévore les petites les petites souris so that's the subject sujet dévore the verb eat les petites souris this is the co in this case d it's important that it's a d complément objet direct direct means there's no preposition no preposition here so le gros chat dévore les petites souris complément d'objet direct so to go from voix active to voix passive the cod becomes the subject and you end up with this guy so the cod so the cod les petites souris becomes the subject so son dévoré son dévoré et the subject le sujet becomes what is what's called le complément d'agent par by the big cat par le gros chat so this guy par le gros chat the whole thing here that's a complément d'agent ok ok so that's one thing so now let's look now uh, uh, which verbs can go from active voice to passive voice and that's an excellent question and the answer is that verb the verb has to be a transitive direct verb transitif direct like manger for instance to eat okay so you have it has to be verb transitif direct okay so now why is it why do i bring this up why do i bring this up Let's go back to that example. Les petites, les petites, les petites, oh, it's horrible. Les petites souris sont dévorées par le gros chat. Sometimes people get confu get confused by this. Does that look like something familiar? Here you have être, and here you have participe passé, the past participle. And basically what I'm trying to say is that this looks very much like PC, passé composé of dévoré. So how do you know that this is not passé composé? Okay? Well it's easy because you know that dévoré, dévoré is a verb transitif it's even direct direct and you know that verb transitif always use always 
just use avoir as the auxiliary. Okay. So for sure, this cannot be passé composé because this is the wrong auxiliary. Um, yeah, that's something that confuses people when they see that. They always think it's a passé composé, uh, but it's actually the passive voice in this case. So it's uh, just something uh, to keep in mind. Okay, I think I'm going to stop here for this uh, video. I think it's a pretty long array. So if you like this kind of comment, uh, this like a, if you like this kind of video, please comment and tell me that you want to see more. Or give me some suggestions. And uh, of course, you can like that would help me, and you can subscribe that would help me even more. So. Uh, I think I'm just gonna say goodbye and I'll see you soon, hopefully. Bye.